to Redburn Arena on the campus of Illinois State University. It is the IHSA Class AA State Basketball Tournament for the girls. We are in game number two of the quarterfinals between the 32 and 3 Galesburg Silver Streaks and the 32 and 2 Fenwick Friars. Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Aprati with the IHSA Television Network. Last season, Fenwick made it as far as the sectional final, losing to Mother McCauley. Galesburg made it to the super sectionals, only to lose to Champaign Centennial. So both of these teams have a lot to prove, and we're only moments away of finding out who will move on to the semis to play Belleville Alta. For more on this afternoon's game, here are your announcers, Scott Slocum and Daryl Kim. Okay, Lisa, thank you very much. It's an all-West showdown here in game two of the quarterfinals at Redbird Arena. Western Illinois in Galesburg against the West Suburbs at Oak Park. I'm Scott Slocum along with Daryl Kemp. And Daryl, this is a good one. Fenwick is loaded. Galesburg, a lot of experience. They've been here seven of the last eight years. Well, when you have an, uh, Evan Massey coach the team, you know their experience. You know that they, uh, they're prepared well, and it's going to be a real good game. It really will be a good game. And Fenwick and Galesburg, of course, played very well in super sectional games. We see Fenwick. Uh, they started out, they've been through the public league, four public league wins, including against Young and Marshall in the sectionals, and in the super against Mother McCauley, a 60 through 52 victory. As far as Galesburg goes, uh, they went through Sycamore, Rock Island, and then in the super sectional, they had to go through Rock, uh, the Rockford area, and they defeated Rockford Boylan in that ballgame, 67 to 41. Well, when you talk about these two programs, Daryl, you talk about uh, very, very good players, and we have two of the finest individual players in the state of Illinois. Right, well, Amanda Gunther is the uh, go-to player from Galesburg, and uh, Amanda is not only... They got Aaron Lawless on first. Well, they told me I think she deserves to go well, first, Daryl. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about Aaron Lawless. Aaron Lawless is uh, sometimes player of the year. She's first team All-State in the Tribune. She was on the USA basketball team in Colorado Springs. She's just about everything there is to Fenwick basketball right now. She's on the uh, WBCA All-American team, and she's on the McDonald's All-American team. And she's the go-to player. But they can't really just watch her because if they watch her, those other players on Fenwick are very loaded. And then Amanda Gunther coming up is uh, Galesburg. She has experience. She's played here before. She's played in all 35 games. Uh, she's leading scorer in 24 of those games and leading rebounder. She's got experience. She's a captain, and she's a leader on that team. They, she's our go-to player. As far as keys to the game are concerned, Dale, what are they? Well, I think probably for Galesburg, it's one thing that they got to look at is they have to they have to be able to play defense against Fenwick's team. Fenwick's going to probably play a zone, so they got to move their ball around. They're going to have to get open looks. They're going to have to slash to the basket. They like to shoot uh, free throws. They have a real good free throw percentage, so they got to get those free throws. As far uh, as Fenwick is concerned, what do you see them needing to do? Well, Fenwick is probably going to have to play good defense. Fenwick's going to have to be there, active in their zone because they're going to be sending cutters through, and they're going to have to recognize that. They always play a zone defense. Uh, they're going to have to avoid foul trouble, especially on Aaron Lawless. And they're probably going to have to have good ball movement because, you know, Galesburg plays real tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, Darrell Lawless is the key. Question is, can Galesburg stop her? Uh, probably not. What they have to do is they have to concentrate and not let the other players be more important than Lawless. They have to concentrate on Lawless, but they can't just concentrate on her because the other players can shoot. It's either Fenwick or Galesburg wanting to meet a date with Belleville Autop tomorrow in the state semifinals. Now for this afternoon's Game 2 starting lineups, here's public address announcer Dave Coley. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the players and coaches in our second quarterfinal game of the day between the Silver Streaks of Galesburg High School and the Friars of Oak Park Fenwick High School. First, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the non-starters from Galesburg High School. A 5'7 sophomore forward, number four, Latoya Wright. A 5'9 senior forward, number 10, Casey Berry. A 5'8 freshman guard, number 20, Libby White. A 5'2 sophomore guard, number 22, Sade Boyd. A 5'6 sophomore guard, number 30, Michelle Dennison. A 5'7 junior guard, number 34, Katie Wessels. A 5'10 junior forward, number 40, Brittany Steppen. A 
5'8 junior forward, number 44, Whitney Shepard. A 5'11 senior center, number 50, Aaron Bruner. A 5'7 sophomore forward, number 52, Michelle Soper. And a 5'9 junior forward, number 54, Andy Allison. And now, introducing the non-starters from Fenwick High School. A 5'8 sophomore guard, number 11, Brittany Johnson. A 5'9 senior guard forward, number 12, Raven Gengler. A 5'3 junior guard, number 15, Tracy Pollock. A six foot junior forward center, number 21, Jasmine Quintana. A 5'6 freshman guard, number 22, Rashida Joyner. A six foot junior forward, number 24, Bridget Liston. A 5'8 junior guard forward, number 30, Katie Napleton. A 5'9 sophomore forward, number 31, Megan Musselman. A six foot senior guard forward, number 32, Margaret Knapp. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. For Galesburg, a 5'8 senior guard, number 12, Annie Parkin. For Fenwick, a 5'7 senior guard, number three, Nicole Rivera. For Galesburg, a 5'5 senior guard, number 14, Elizabeth Hosline. For Fenwick, a 5'6 junior guard, number five, Kristen Heideloff. For Galesburg, a 5'9 senior forward, number 24, Amanda Gunther. For Fenwick, a 5'7 senior guard, number 10, Brianne Smiley. For Galesburg, a 5'9 junior guard, number 32, Jenna Bicego. For Fenwick, a 5'11 senior forward, number 33, Elizabeth Marino. For Galesburg, a 5'9 senior forward, number 42, Allison Buckman. And for Fenwick, a 6'2 senior guard forward, number 34, Aaron Lawless. Ladies and gentlemen, the Galesburg Silver Streaks enter the game with a 32-3 season record and are coached by Evan Massey. He's assisted by Steve Peachy, Michael Rucks, Jay Barshinger, and Sarah Wood. The Finwick High School Friars bring a 32-2 record into the contest and are coached by David Power. He's assisted by Michael Valenti, John Weaver, Dana Leonard, and Dale Heidelock. Okay, so those are the starters and Fenwick and Galesburg. Let's take a look, closer look at them. Daryl Gunther, Bicego, Bachman, Hoslin and Parkin, and Fenwick with Marino, Smiley, the center, Lawless, who basically is a guard center forward. She can play wherever she wants. In fact, that's what she's listed as on the, on the roster, on the program, guard center forward. She likes to play outside. She will go to the basket, but uh, one thing they got to look for is they got to watch for, you know, charging fouls on her. Okay, those are the starters. Now, the gentleman that will be calling this afternoon's game number two. Richard Frederick, Roger Nichols, and Todd Salen. And we're just about set to go. The winner takes on Belleville all top tomorrow in the state semifinals at 11 o'clock. Fenway 32 and two, Galesburg 32 and three. As I mentioned in the open, Darrell, a battle of a good old West shootout here, Western Illinois Galesburg against the near west suburbs of Chicago, Oak Park. And we come to Central Illinois for the matchup. Lawless is going to jump against Allison Bachman. Fenwick in the gray, Galesburg in the black. And Lawless, as she has all year long, controls the tip. And Galesburg opens up the nerve man to man. Brianna Smiley will run the show. Hits it to Heidelock. Down low. To high low. Right away, Lawless makes her presence known. Galesburg's going to have to help off on that a little bit. Lawless is just too big for their inside. 
The Silver Streaks, very good defensively. Very good defensively. Don't give up many points at all. Out top for the Silver Streaks is Jenna Bicego, 5'9", Jr. First man to cut is going to have to try to keep up with Aaron Lawless today, which is a tough task. That is tough. And uh, Fenwick's in there's on defense. Bicego has it taken away and stolen by Smiley. Two on two break. Good work from behind. Poking it away is Elizabeth Hosline. And it will stay Fenwick basketball. Good job by Hosline of calming that break right away. Rivera will throw it in underneath the Fenwick basket. They're trying to find Lawless, but she is held big time. They're trying to just not let her go where she wants to go and make it tough on her to get to the basket. Allison Bachman called for the game's first foul. That looked more like a wrestling match. Now Fenwick was looking for a backdoor situation. There. Smiley brings it in out top to Rivera. There's Smiley. Rivera and Smiley continue to play catch. Lawless scores. One thing she likes to do is put the ball down and go right up. She is, of course, one of the favorites to win Ms. Basketball in the state of Illinois. Galesburg needs to get a bucket here, already trailing four to nothing. Right about a minute and a half. There's Gunther. Smiley will defend against her. Nice pass back door and a foul is called. Elizabeth Marino will get called for laying the hammer on Amanda Gunther. Nice back cut, nice look. All right, that's what we talked about earlier. They're going to send cutters through and look for the back door cuts and they're going to look for penetration. And that's what Galesburg is going to have to do to draw fouls. They're a very good free throw shooting team. 68% on the year as a team for Galesburg. Amanda Gunther is at 74% and she misses her first effort. Champions of the Western Big Six. It's just amazing for Coach Evan Massey. 16 years in a row with 20 wins or more and a state record nine consecutive sectional titles. Darrell, that's unreal. That is, that is. But, uh, it, you know, if you know Evan and you know what he does with his kids in the summer and the way he prepares them, you'd know why. Smiley. For Marino. There's Heidloff. She'll fire a three and miss it. Goes over the backboard. That will be Galesburg ball. Kristen Heidlaw, 5'6", junior. 49 three-pointers on the air. By she's, far and away leads the team. She's very proficient at that, too. She's really a good outside shooter. She is. Isigo sets up the offense. Fenwick doing a nice job of ball pressure there. And the weak side is open, and they have to reverse the ball a little more quickly to get it there. And they got that weak side L shot open. Nice pass back door. Parkin gives it up. Gunther scores. Amanda Gunther answers his 15 points a game. She's got all three of Galesburg's points here in the early going, and we have a one-point contest. Smiley with the left hand. No. And a strong rebound by Gunther, and a foul. This will be on Elizabeth Marino. It's her second. And if you're Galesburg, goes probably let's let's try to handle the call here. And let's just let's play. Let's stay close and try to get him in the second half. Okay, and everybody everybody's tight at the beginning of the game. So this is just just feeling each other out. Pause line for Parkin. And this pass is going to go off the fingers of Rivera. But it's still Galesburg ball. And here comes the Silver Streaks depth into the ball game right now. Casey Ferry enters. Sade Boyd enters. And also into the ball game is Brittany Steffen. Coach Master trying to keep his troops fresh. There's Parkin. Skips it cross court to Steffen. Nothing doing, they'll reset. See, Galesburg's setting picks on the backside of the zone to get their kids open. That's, that's a good strategy. Barry to Boyd. Pass is tipped away and stolen. Idlehoff tipped it to Smiley. Smiley behind the back and scores. What a nice 
Nice move by Brianne Smiley. Three point friend Fenwick lead. Parkin hounded out top by Smiley. Approaching the midway mark of the opening quarter. There's another steal. This is Heidloff running in and scoring. Christian just getting up in the passing lane and getting a hand on the ball, deflecting it, not trying to steal it, and picking it up for the layup. Timeout Time taken by Gilbert. Coach Evan Massey wants a timeout. This I just say broadcast. Yeah, I've heard that quite a bit. Um, we've played all the teams in the other bracket, every one of them. Actually, we played one of them twice. I think it's good for us to play teams that we don't know that much about, and hopefully they don't know that much about us. Uh, I, I hope that our girls don't take anybody lightly. Last year, when we lost to Mother McCauley, I think we were looking a little bit ahead to the Marion and Marshall matchups. Uh, this year, I think we're a little bit more on top of things, a little more focused. And I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, if Galesburg takes us, it'll be, it'll be because they're the better team that day. I, I think we're ready to have a good tournament run here. 168 wins for that man, David Power, in his 26th year of coaching girls' high school basketball. And he's got some interesting shoes on. He does. <laughs> Darren, do you have any of those or not? No, I don't, but uh, I'm going to go to find out where he got those. <laughs> you do that, okay? Uh, eight to three, and a traveling violation. Now, looking at the stats here in the early going, Fenwick, four of six from the field. Galesburg has tried one shot. All right, well, what's happening is Galesburg's working the ball around the outside, and Fenwick's guards are taking chances. They're up in the passing lanes. They got a couple of steals. Rivera almost got a hand on the ball. Smiley got a ball, and uh, Heidloff got a ball. So they need to go through the middle and occupy those back people so that the guards have to drop in a little bit. There's Lawless. Seems like she's been quiet, but if you look at the, uh, the stats, she has four points already. It's the guards that have been very prevalent here in the early going. Rivera. Yeah, steals. Nicole Rivera is very underrated. She, she really is. handles the ball, and she's got good quickness. She can shoot, and she's really a heady player. Traveling on Smiley. Galesburg trailing by five. Still, it's amazing. We played nearly five minutes here. One shot attempt so far. All the credit to the Fenwick defense. They are screening the backside of that zone and trying to get that pass inside. Interesting way to attack it. It's a good way to do it if you if you just execute the, the pass a little better. Guthrie comes back in for the silver streaks. And Brittany Steffen will sit down and into the ball game for Fenwick for the first time is Raven Gengler, 5'9 senior, averages about four and a half points a ball game. You know, Raven can probably start on most teams, but on this <laughs> team she comes in and she's a she's an excellent passer. She knows the game and she plays well with these other guys. And she almost had a steal off the inbounds there. A three-point field goal for Annie Perkin. That should help Galesburg get off the mark a bit. They needed a shot. Perkin, no more for defense. Okay, Galesburg's back in, in their man-to-man -man defense again. Trying to match up a little bit on the inside and put two people on Wallace. Rivera to Gangler. 2.40 left to play. First quarter down low, Lawless, and Guthrie's going to get called for grabbing onto her. That's a nice feed inside by Raven Gingler right away. And talk about her passing ability. They're a little bit smaller now that they took Marino out of the game, but they have a lot better ball handling, and they're a little faster and better on the perimeter. The big three turned a five-point deficit into a two-point deficit. Rivera lobs it into Lawless. Fade away, 15-footer, good. Tough shot. She's got such great balance. There's a foul. It's going to be caught on Kristen Heilov. I don't think the official wanted to call it at first. He was going to let the bump go, but then he saw that my seagull fell down, so he went ahead and blew the whistle. That's good officiating. That yeah, was. I don't mind when an official, there. I'm not sure you're the coach, but I don't mind when an official lets a bump go and it doesn't affect the play. No, I mean, when she lost the ball, then he yep. felt he had to call it. I see go to Allison Bachman. Tried to feed Gunther down low. Can't handle the pass. Yeah, Gingler deflected that ball. They've got a lot of deflections, not steals so much, but deflections, and then they recover the ball because they're so quick. Gangler to Lawless. 
I don't think she's in any part of the rim with her four field goals so far. No, she wants to shoot right from that top part of the key. That's where she's the most dangerous, and she's also got a tremendous spin move from there. 12 to 6. Back to back buckets for Aaron Lawless. Gunther tries to answer. Can't do it. And Gengler tips it to Rivera. To Lawless. Good catch. So many times people don't understand about somebody who's got good hands and able to catch in transition, but that was a very, very tough catch and a good one. Yeah, she's, she's really good at getting the ball up the floor and going right to the basket. Parkin tries again and not able to connect this time to downtown. It'll be Fenwick ball. A couple of new players check into the game. For Galesburg, a Haas line back in along with Brittany Steffen. It's really tough for Galesburg because they, they're not really respecting their inside game much, so they're they're really pressuring the guards. They need to get the ball inside and, and attack inside, them, even though Lawless is in there. Fenwick trying to push the lead to double digits, up by eight. Hyde lock to Smiley. Gengler, air ball. Seagull has it for Galesburg. Here come the silver streaks. This is a transition they need, but they're not getting any transition baskets. Fenway doing a nice job of getting back and defending the paint. Our Seagull inside foul is going to be caught on Lawless. Good strong take to the basket by Brittany Steffen, the 5'10 junior. Averages five a game, and she was very aggressive. You may as well take it at the goal, right? That's what you need. You need to take it in, and you need to draw some fouls. Aaron does like the block shots. Nate Powers next year will be coaching his daughter, Aaron. She's an eighth grader. She'll be coming to Fenwick next year, and she comes from good bloodlines. Her mother, second leading scorer in the history of Marquette basketball, Julie Sievers. That's right, and she's not only uh, a good basketball player, she's a great kid. She's around us a lot in the summertime with our AAU teams, and uh, Dave is really looking forward to, to, to coaching her. Pretty exciting for him, that's for sure. Shepard made them both. Again, those were sorely needed. Approaching the half-minute mark in the opening quarter, Belleville Altoff awaits the winner. They defeated Champagne Centennial just moments ago. Fenwick wants to hold for the last shot here in the first quarter. That's a good move considering Galesburg gets the ball to start the second quarter. Right. Watch for number 15 in the ball game right now. Number 15 is Tracy Pollard. Right. She, she can really shoot the three. She's a 56% free-point throw, uh, three point shooter, and uh, they like to put her in these situations, try and get her the ball in a kickout. That's Charlie to hide lock. Now she's not bad either. Her 50th three of the year will give Fenwick a nine-point lead. As we enter the second quarter of play. A great start for David Power and Fenwick. They lead by nine. We'll be back to learning to normal after these local messages. Who's missing his first state tournament in all the years we've been down here? He's an outstanding coach from Naperville North when they played in the state tournament. He's in the hospital this weekend, and we want to wish him well. And there's a lot of coaches in the hospitality room who's saving a seat for him. So, Dale, we hope you get better and uh, take care of yourself. All right, back to action. Second quarter just underway. Fenwick, nine point advantage, 17 to 8. The Gelsberg ball in the black uniforms. Fenwick, very aggressive defensively. Matchup zone here, Dale, to start the second quarter. Right, Dave likes to play matchup zones, and he likes to look for those penetration moves that he can stop because they like to collapse on the inside. Now there's another hand on the ball. That time it's Raven Gangler poking a cross-court feed out of bounds. They get their hands on everything. Yeah, they're very active in the zone, and they really, they really like to steal the ball, and they like to go for that. And they know they have Aaron back in the back that can help them out. So it's, it's finally a good sits down. Good start for her. A couple of points, a couple of steals. Rivera back in. Gunther off the inbounds. That was just a wide open look. They're two inbounds players. What they scored off of, and uh, Galesburg is getting nice looks. 
Fenwick is not really picking up the, the cuts on the out of bounds play. Rivera took her eyes off that feed, and that's a turnover. I see go. Got their cut off by Lawless. Got there, out top, three Haas line. Nope, and Lawless, another rebound. Hide lock to Rivera. Baseline, there's Pollock. Can't knock down the three. And the rebound to Stefan. Here it comes by Seagull. She skips it cross court. Harkin already has one three. Lisa Prati, what'd you get during that last time out from Galesburg? Well, Coach Macy had made a comment. He was telling them offensively they need to take the shots when they're open at the perimeter. They're not doing that. He said they're backing down. They're feeling the pressure from Fenwick's defense. What they need to do is get to the hole and take the shot. But they've got to take it, and right now they're not doing that. Well, the person you're looking at, Amanda Gunther, is the young lady to take that shot. Had it blocked by Lawless, but Lawless fouled her. That's the second foul on Aaron Lawless. She's going to have to sit down for a while, Daryl. Right. Aaron should not have left the floor. She could have just played body position and probably Amanda couldn't have shot over her, but she left the ground, and that's going to be a foul. And that evens this game up just a little bit, doesn't it? If she's not in the game. Now, she's not taking her out right now, but uh, she's going to have to be very careful. Boy. Gamble here for David Power. And Amanda Gunther trying to make it a five-point game. Can't do it. Marino controls. Sideline transition to Power. Nicole Rivera, high post, Lawless, steps through, fights up the shot, nope. And no bucket, they're going to call the foul on the floor. It's a good call by the official. Yeah, some coaches like to take a player out with two fouls, and some, play, some coaches leave them in, but uh, it depends on what Dave's done during the season. If he's left her in and she's learned to play with fouls, then he knows his players better than anyone else. But uh, the problem with her is, offensively, she's so active going to the basket, that's where she could pick up a third foul. But she is smart enough to know when to pull it back and when to get after it. Lawless tried to hit. Marino on a backdoor cut. Not able to connect. Frederick leads Galesburg 17-11. Look at these two towns, Galesburg and Western Illinois, about 40, 45 minutes west of Peoria. Western Big Six at Oak Park. Chicago Catholic League, over a thousand students. And that is a tough, tough conference that they play in. Three by Gunther, not dropping. Rivera has the ball fall into her hands. Then she took a shot in the face. Pushes ahead. Ball for three. That's way really yeah. short. And the foul is going to be called on Gunther. Now the Western, uh, the GCAC conference that they play in, and, and the uh, Catholic conferences, yeah, those are two of the toughest conferences in the state, and they really second. prepare teams to come down here competition is just it's outstanding in those conferences both stars now with two fouls as you see Idloff re-enter and Pollock sit down that's the second foul on Gunther interesting here Evan Massey taking her out with two but David Power leaving Lawless in with two well Evan's got a more balanced team I think scoring wise and so oh, wide open Rivera it's Marino but everything runs through Aaron on there on the Fenwick team, so he's leaving her in for that situation. Fenwick up by eight. Two-three zone. See if they're matching up out of the Gandela right there. They slide at Stefan. Nice by Sego. Gets a cross court, open jumper, good. Annie Parker. And there you saw the backpack with the skip pass. And that had to hurt. Big screen down low. Gelsberg hanging around. Down six. Smiley to Rivera. Short on the three. The weak side rebound. You just don't want to leave that block. And that's what Fenwick did a good job there. Out of the key, smiling. She can't knock down the three. Long rebound comes out to Stefan. Pause line. Runs in, saw Lawless, and turned, turned tail and ran the other way. 
Probably a smart play. See if they try to go after Lawless with those two fouls. I see go. Nice pass down low. Parkin blocked out of there by Lawless. It was the same thing. Another back screen on another shot from the baseline. We have a timeout on the floor. Four minutes, 14 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Fenwick, 19. Galesburg, 13. Well, that's a good question. I mean, you look at Lawless, that she uh, has it all, that she's not only a big kid that is physical and can post up low, but she is agile and active, can go out and shoot on the perimeter. So, you know, it's not going to be a case that uh, we can have one player committed to guard her. We've got to, it's got to be a team effort to try and at least, you know, find something that we can take away from her. Evan Massey, the head coach of Galesburg, you're talking about Aaron Lawless, who's led her team in scoring 29 of their 34 games this year. 19 times, Daryl, she's led them in both scoring and rebounding. Yes, she can do it all. Well, that's, that's what happens when you have a player that's an All-American player. 19-13, Fenwick leads, it's Galesburg ball. I see go. Into Barry. Can't fire in or knock down that three, rather. And the rebound comes down to Marino. That was a good look. I think it's the first out of bounds play that Gillsburg didn't score. On. And they did have a good look. Tied off, down low. Marino open and finishes. She averages four. That's what she has here in the early going. Elizabeth Marino. Eight point game. Fenwick on top. Seagull hounded. Got their back in despite those two fouls. Good move by Evan Massey. You need her in there. By Seagull. Short on the three. And Barry tracks it down. Fresh set here for the Silver Streaks. Good job by Smiley, not allowing the ball to be reversed. Yeah, she cut it right off. These second chance opportunities are things you really have to take advantage of. There's a foul. Kristen Heidlock reached in and grabbed the hand of Amanda Gunther. That'll be the sixth foul against Fenwick. So one away from the bonus are the Silver Streaks. And that's an important offensive weapon for Galesburg. An amazing run for Evan Massey. Seven trips in the last eight years. And he usually brings home some hardware. Five of the seven times with a trophy. Evan's one of the outstanding coaches in the state. In the summertime, he prepares his kids. He takes them to all the big tournaments, and they play against all the good teams. So they get a lot of experience. Harkin and Hawes line directing traffic out top. Barry. New player in the ballgame. Bachman back in for Galesburg. Bring it back out top. Good defense by Fenwick. And Gunther with the score. Lawless hung in the air, avoided her third foul. A whistle and a hold. And we're going to get an offensive foul called against Fenwick. And Galesburg again, Darrell, they, they, every time that you feel like Fenwick's going to run out on them here, they come back. Well, Galesburg's being very patient. They're getting a lot of cuts. They're getting those back cuts, and they're getting some easy layups on them. Bridget Liston will give Aaron Lawless a break. Lawless sits down with 10 points and two fouls. Good move here by David Power. Get her out of there probably for the last 225. You got away with playing her for about three or four minutes with those two fouls. And Hawsline not able to draw her team closer. Rivera to Smiley. Man to man defense here for Galesburg. We approach the two minute mark. Galesburg fans doing the Duke jump or the Duke hop at the top of your screen. Silver Street crazies. 
<laughs> and we're going to get a hold out top. It's a hand check. And again, Elizabeth Hosline for grabbing on there. That's only the fifth foul against the Silver Streaks. As far as Oak Park is concerned, you know, they've only had girls basketball since the 92-93 year. They've only had seniors since 1995. And look what David Powers has done in that short amount of time. Right, well, Dave left IHM. He was at Proviso West when he first started coaching. Then he went to IHM, and he's down here, won a state championship, got a third place. And then when Fenwick opened up, it was a great opportunity for him to go and start a new program. And uh, everybody liked to play him this year two or three years, but uh, he's got a lot of kids come in here. He does a great job, and uh, found it's an outstanding place to go to school, so he's had some outstanding players come there. Rivera will look to throw it in. She's going to hurry up. That's it. Five seconds. Evan Massey, that's what he preaches. Defense, defense, and a little bit of defense. Yes, he does. Gunther will stay in despite the two fouls. They go back door to her. Not able to convert. Good catch, though, but not able to knock it down. Marino the rebound. Smiley will set up the Fenwick offense. Minute 25 to go. Right, lob to Smiley. Wallace on the bench, David Powers telling his girls as Smiley looks over to pull it out. Spread the floor. Well, he's got Bridget Liston, a very athletic player, but not the score. So they're probably going to go for a penetration, a kick, and a three. Or maybe the last shot or a really good one, right? Probably. Probably Smiley or Hydeloff for the two that want to take it. Probably will be set up by Rivera. Has it now. Now Rivera. Six-point game. Well, Gelsberg wanted to play oh, the first 16 up. minutes to get to the second 16, and they've done that. There's a kick. They've got Elizabeth Marino Finn wide open on the backside of the basket, but Gelsberg's putting great pressure on up there, and they're, they're almost in a trap situation, and they're not looking down the floor. Hosline re-enters for Gelsberg. She'll get by Seagull. Also in for Gelsberg is Sade Boyd, 5'2 sophomore. Uh, Evan said he brought her up uh, after the Thanksgiving tournament and Christmas tournament situations, and she played real well, and she's really added a lot to his team. A team that relies on its depth. Rivera has Boyd all over her. Smiley stumbled a bit with the ball. Fires and scores. Well, they didn't hold for the last one, but they held for a good one. They got a nice shot right at the L's. Under 10 seconds to go. Let's see if Galesburg can get something off. There's Gunther to Parkin. I don't know if how much time is left. Boyd didn't know. And that's it for the half. That's yeah, tough not to get a shot right at the end of the half when you have an opportunity. That is crucial to not get a shot off there for Galesburg, who's trying to hang in this game. And quite frankly, Darrell, they have. They did a nice job, you know, considering Fenwick the favorite here, considering their second statewide ranking to be only down by eight is some of the victory for the Silver Streaks. Let's head over to Lisa Potty. She's standing by with David Powers. Coach, your biggest concern now for the second half is the fact that uh, Aaron Lawless has fouled trouble now in the first half. What do you do then in the second? Well, that, that's hurt us quite a bit. Um, we just guys, hopefully she doesn't pick up a fourth. Uh, we'll play, we're gonna play with her and we'll go when she got us here. So we're not gonna be too careful with her, but hopefully she can not pick up that fourth early. Uh, we have an eight point lead here. Hopefully that gives a little padding so we can weather the storm if she has to sit out a little bit. But we're in good shape. Uh, uh, Galesburg's a very good team, I knew that. and it's. Thus far, been every kind of a game I thought it would be. Well, you guys are definitely executing on offense, regardless if Aaron is in or not. Yeah, our execution is good. Uh, we just got to adjust that back pick they're doing on our zone against some easy baskets off of that. That's what we're going to talk about right now at halftime. Okay, thanks, Coach. Back to you, Scott. 23-15, Fenwick leads Galesburg. We'll be back after these local messages.
Welcome back to Red Bird Arena. We are in the second game of the quarterfinal right now. Fenwick is in the lead, 23 to 15 against Galesburg. And joining me right now are the Fenwick cheerleaders. They are the Friars. And the captains are Lindsey Hoey. And the second captain is Rebecca Schwab. And they're really excited, obviously, to be here once again downstate. But Lindsay, the excitement is always incredible whenever you come downstate. And you guys look, always look so excited. Tell me a little bit about what it's been like this past week and how you've supported the girls' team. Well, you know, it's, it's been crazy. We've had games almost every day. We've had to be there all the time. But, you know, we're supporting the girls. They're doing a great job, and we're happy to be here. So, yeah. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you put together a different cheer maybe than you've been doing throughout the season. So let's hear it. Let's hear what you have to say. Well, you know, we've had a bunch of different cheers this whole season. And, you know, we just, we just put all our stuff together and kind of collaborated into one. So, All right. So this is going to be a good one. So everybody get ready. cheerleading squad cheering on their team right now that's in the lead 23 to 15. Now joining me from the IHSA is the head official Tim Dreyer and Tim there has been a uh, commercial spot that's been running nationally recruiting officials. Tell me a little bit about that. What we're trying to do it here in the state of Illinois is uh, obtain more referees because you know, the turnover is so, so great, especially with girls basketball. We're trying to get more ladies to officiate the, the girls game. And what we've done in the past is try to get some of the younger girls out of high school and college. And because of career moves and because of occupational things, they tend to stop a little bit. So now we're trying to get some of the, uh, the, the older ladies who might be PE teachers, uh, housewives and stuff, to come on out and make some extra money and put some time back in the ball game. We have uh, two of them. One of the referees, the first game, Tom Huster, his wife, Gail, uh, has been refereeing for two years now, and she's into the regionals this year. So she's coming along. We're trying to get more, more females to come out and start refereeing for us. We, uh, and males, we, we're running short on them. What is the actual process, though? Do they have to go through the eighth grade? Do they go through junior high first before they, they can actually start officiating in the IHSA? Okay, uh, how the IHSA does is uh, once you become 18 years of age, you apply to the Illinois High School Association, you get yourself a license, and once you have the license, it's up to the different, you contact the different assignment chairmen to find games, and the best way is to start out with the junior high games, work your way into freshman, sophomore games, and into the varsity games from there. But the problem we have with women officials is when they get to be good, the colleges grab them right away. And, uh, and that's what we're seeing a lot with the, with the girls from down this way. Candace uh, Daniels, who worked the first game, has been uh, started to do the Big Ten this year and probably end up in the WNBA in the next couple of years from there. So well, ladies are hard to get. We would love to have them. And even getting uh, some of the good young males is always a, a challenge for us as well. Well, the spot has definitely been helping you then. Yes, it has. Well, that is Tim Dreyer. He is the head official for the IHSA for girls basketball. We've got a lot more to come here at the second game of the quarterfinals here at Redbird Arena right now. Fenwick in the lead, 23 to 15. We'll be back right after these local messages.
Welcome back to Redbird Arena on the campus of Illinois State University in Bloomington Normal. I'm Scott Slocum along with Daryl Kipp. Halftime score 23 to 15. And Daryl, there's one thing I want to make a correction on. Aaron Lawless did pick up her third foul there. And it is exactly what took place was exactly what you thought would take place, an offensive foul. Right. She's very aggressive going to the basket, and that's what happened. Uh, that's what she's got to watch out for. Defense, she can control, but offense, she sometimes goes to the basket. People get in her way, and Galesburg's very good at taking charges. For sure. Right, let's take a look at the first half numbers. Of course, uh, Galesburg hanging in there, and Daryl, they just haven't got as many shots as Fenwick. That's been big. No, but you know what Galesburg has done? It's a masterful job by Evan Massey. He's controlling the tempo of the game. Fenwick's got great guards. They can get out. They can run, but they haven't got many fast breaks. Uh, they're rebounding, probably have an edge on, on Galesburg, but they're not getting out. They're not getting transition baskets. Evans controlling the tempo of the game, and Fenwick's kind of standing around watching, even on his own defense, when it goes to those skip passes. And, of course, points in the paint, huge. Aaron Lawless responsible for most of those 12 points. Uh, and Marino got a couple of nice looks. Uh, one off an out-of-bounds play, and she got the other one uh, on the inside when they just kind of left her. Uh, so Marino's done a nice job inside for them also. As far as individual scoring leaders are concerned, this is no surprise. Gunther leading Galesburg and Lawless leading Fenwick. That looks like what it should be. They're the team leaders on, uh, on both of them. But what it comes down to, Galesburg's a lot more balanced. Uh, they're going to get a lot more scoring from different people. So they have to get that if they're going to win this game. Bill, you're exactly right. Evan Massey has kept things in check as far as Fenwick is concerned. They average 73 points a game, and they have 23 here at the break. We'll return with second half action after these local messages. Welcome back to Redbird Arena, Class AA Girls State Basketball Tournament here for the IHSA. Fenwick in the lead, 23 to 15. Joining me right now is Galesburg head coach Evan Macy and Coach Macy, Amanda Gunther in foul trouble, Aaron Lawless in foul trouble for Fenwick. Talk a little bit about what's going to take place here in the second half. We've got to find some offense. You know, right now we're just uh, Fenwick's just pushed us out on the floor so far. We're just not generating much in terms of offense that we've got to be able to be a little more aggressive offensively. Are you saying that many of your players on the perimeter aren't taking the shot? Is it because they're intimidated? Well, I don't know. I think we're taking shots, but I think we're, we're settling. We, we need to end up drive into the into the zone a little bit. We need to push the zone back, I think. Thanks, coach. Back to you, Scott. OK, thank you very much, Lisa. We appreciate it. And only 13 shots in the first half. That's not enough to get the job done. Uh, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. There's that back cut, and there's Miss Gunther with one of her several buckets in the first half. Right, there's Brianne Smiley just taking the ball to basket with her back. Great nice move. move yeah. Great move. Brianne's very talented. And then Rivera, of course, leading the break as she has all year long. Aaron. There's that real nice catch by Lawless. All right, Aaron getting down the floor. That's something you really got to you got to take their transition away. And most of the time, that's what Galesburg has done. That's why they're, they're close in this game right now. Big shot by Park, and she made that three when things were starting to slip away. And yeah, there's, there's the Marino. unsung hero of the first half, Marino. Yeah. There's and there the again is the back screen. And there's Gunther with the bucket. You know, these first two games we've seen here today, we had Sarah Thomas with a huge game for Belleville Altop, unexpectedly, I think, by many people, but uh, not for Belleville Altop. And the same thing can be said here today for Elizabeth Marino. Yeah, she's really helping we are at halftime. It's 23 to 15. Fenwick leads. Our friends from Galesburg, we'll be back.
Silver Streaks and the Friars ready to start the third quarter. Eight point lead for Oak Park looking for its 33rd victory of the year. Galesburg is as well. And here we go. Be interesting to see what halftime adjustments are going to be made. Now Galesburg is going to come out and trap a little bit. It looked like they were set up in a zone. And they're just going to be all over them. And there's a foul right off the bat as Elizabeth Hausline got over aggressive, knocking Nicole Rivera to the ground. And Wallace will start the second half with three fouls. What do you think Coach Power told her at halftime? Don't foul. Don't that simple. <laughs> stay on the ground and give them a basket if you have to, but stay in the game offensively. The Galesburg's in there trapped. Backside is wide open. And Lawless right to the rack. <laughs> 10 in the first half, two to start the second half. The lead is 10 for the Friars. You just can't let her get to the basket quite so easily. Gunther had it stripped away, got it back though. Hosline picks up her dribble. Finds Bachman. A little uh, unorganized here, but that's because of Fenwick's defense. Fenwick's defense is very good. I talked to Evan. He thought his half-court offense was even better than it was last year. Harkin misses the three. And a rebound to Smiley. Sideline break to Heidloff. Rivera finds an opening. And finds Heidloff. That's just vintage Nicole Rivera. She just slides in there and she sees the open person and puts it in. She just makes those plays. And Coach Massey takes a timeout as he does not like the way the second half has started. We'll return with more from Bloomington to Normal after these local messages. For you Galesburg fans, viewing IHSA telecasts on Inside Cable Channel 22 you can now also view these games on Inside Cable Channel 16, KGWB TV, Quad Cities. Galesburg fans not liking what they see here. Just underway in the second half and a 13-point prior lead. And Federal will just keep, keep driving at you. They have so many weapons. They are tough in every sense of the word. Barry back into the ball game. She has it baseline. Drives, not able to finish. That was just a little intimidation there from Aaron Wallace inside. High block quickly back the other way. Marino will slow things down. Here's Smiley. And we are going to get a blocking foul as Hosline hits the floor hard. And one thing, if you notice, when Heidloff goes down the floor offensively, she likes to spot up in those corners, and uh, Galesburg is not taking that away. Both of her threes have come from the corner. Third foul called on Hosline. Second team. Rivera blows right by Barry. Can't get the left-handed layup to go. We have a whistle and a foul call. And I think we're staying... This way, aren't we? Yeah, it was over the back. Um, really did a nice job of getting in there with her body, and the Gilbert uh, just came right over the back. The Rivera to inbounds. Lawless done a nice job of kind of cranking it down into third gear here. We have a whistle and an injured Silver Streak player down. That is Casey Berry. Underneath the Galesburg basket. Looks like she got hit in the face. Yeah, I think it was an inadvertent uh, when they were mixing up it inside. 
you know, uh, Evan Massey talks about uh, when he comes up. Oh, they're going to show See if we can't uh, catch what happened here to Casey Berry. Headed to Sandberg, Carl Sandberg Junior College next year. Says he wants to continue playing basketball. Let's see what happens. Oh, she Ooh. came down on somebody's ankle. Her ankle. Yeah, that's the one that really hurts. That's the ankle of Amanda Gunther. Right. We thought it was her face. She was holding her face at first. Yeah, well, she's hurting a little bit. We were talking to, uh, talking to Evan Massey. When he comes up and plays in our summer league in the summer, well, we'll get to it. Uh, and what happens, he says, that he can't believe how much more physical the basketball is up in the Chicago area. And uh, all the teams that he plays down here think that they're physical, but when he comes up to our area, it's, it's a lot more physical game. Well, there's Galesburg, 90 points against East Moline United and 35. This shows you what they can do. They can uh, they can play up tempo, they can play down tempo a little bit. But today, right? Well, this is what they've been doing. I mean, uh, in all the years they've been down here, they up tempo, up tempo, run, 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 and transition, and they're not really getting that done today. Still working on Casey Berry, and there's Fenwick. Now the Peoria Central Lions felt the wrath of. Fenwick back on February 8th, huh? Wow. Right, uh, Fenwick's uh, had a lot of teams feel the wrath. <laughs> uh. Lisa Prady is standing by with a uh, young lady that's very proud of her daughter because she is something special. Lisa. Yes, Sonia Lawless is very, very proud of her daughter, Erin. She's done a, a spe spectacular job here during this tournament, but probably the most crucial thing that Aaron actually had to go through was making a decision on what school to choose and what was the reason behind choosing Purdue? Uh, the reason behind choosing Purdue was because it, it's in the Big Ten, it's, it's local, uh, she can have family and friends see her more often if she were in another, as if she was in another conference they wouldn't have that opportunity. Um, one of the main focal points on that decision is Jane Albright from Wisconsin and she had already told Jane Albright at that point that she wasn't interested, she had declined, but Jane gave her a call and said, you know what Aaron? Even though you're not choosing Wisconsin, I'd really like to have you in a Big Ten Division school. And that made a, that made a big influence on Aaron's decision to choose Purdue. As well as the reason why she didn't want to choose Iowa State, because Iowa was also another, another one of the Big 12 schools that contacted her. Yes, one of her final two. She loved Iowa State. She thought it was a good fit. She loved Coach Henley, wonderful program. You know, they, they really support the women's program in, in, in Iowa State, but it was the Big 12. Well, this had to be also be exciting for her to make it her third appearance here uh, downstate. Yes, yeah, and actually she calls it her fourth because she was here for the three-point contest last year. That's right, I remember that. Well, Sonia, thank you very much for joining us and good luck with everything. Congratulations, Erin, was wonderful. Back to you, Scott. Rivera makes both free throws. Get a nice move inside and just use her body to go up and kind of a double pump. There was there anyone who didn't want Erin Lawless? No, there really wasn't. She played on her AAU team and uh, just about every coach in all the world was just in Aaron Lawless. And there's a five-second two by Siegel. Didn't realize that the count was on and Smiley hounded her. There are so many outstanding players in uh, in Illinois, especially in the junior class coming up, and you're going to see some of them down here today, Lauren Lacey and, and of course, Candace Parker. And uh, I can go on. There's, there's uh, just a ton of players that college coaches are really interested in. There's Lawless, effortless. Shot all in one motion and drained it. Who's going to win this basketball? Huh? That's going to be tough. Uh, Aaron Lawless and uh, you got Brittany Jordan from Peoria, who's just an outstanding player. And of course, you have Candace Parker with the junior. Shot missed. Gelsberg will get another opportunity. 17 point game. Fenwick starting to pull away. There's a five call. Get Smiley for being a little bit too aggressive. She's going to move her feet like that. Smiley's aggressive. And I don't know if you, Brianna, if you can be too aggressive or not. She knows, she knows one speed, and that's fast. Short. Air ball by Basigo. Wallace controls. Here's Eidloff. Can't get it to go. And rebound to Sade Boy, the sophomore. Passed up an open three. Lawless came out to the front. And yeah, they swung the ball quickly, but she just wasn't ready to shoot it. Bachman gives it to Gunther, and she's fouled. That was a nice little short corner play they just ran, and she just slid right down in front of Marina. 
And it's the third foul on Marino, I believe. They will get Marino for the foul. Yes, they will. Marino, her third. There is Amanda Gunther. Amanda, an outstanding player. She's going to try to walk on at Drake next year. Grades aren't a problem. 3.8 out of a four. Oh, what would that have been like? 3.8 out of four, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Drake's a nice program. Their coach <laughs> might be leaving for Wisconsin. It's a rumor. So they might have a good coach next year. Oh, I think she's capable of playing at that level. She's a good one. Galesburg's had kids that play with a lot of heart. Uh, sometimes they're not as uh, not as talented as other players, but they're always good because they play with a lot of heart. And that, you can't measure that. Lawless controls. 32-16. Friars back the other way. There's Lawless. Splits a couple of defenders and scores. And Lawless. 16 for Aaron Lawless. She's 8 of 9 from the field. Has four rebounds to go along with those points. And a block shot. That's about her third block shot. Boyd the sophomore just got introduced to the senior. All state or an All-American. Okay, they're making this change now where they bring Raven Gingland. They're a little faster, a little bit better ball handling team now than they were with Marino, but not as big. Marino sits down, having a good ball game though. And bounds to Gunther, and she powers up the score. That's their sixth or eighth point off out of bounds plays. 34-18. Man, to Gunther with 11 of the team's 18 points. Timeout taken by Fenwick. Timeout. You know, we were talking about Galesburg, and you know what's amazing. As far as the silver streaks in the basketball program is concerned, we talked about 16 years in a row for Evan Massey, 20 plus wins, nine straight sectional titles, which is a record. The boys and girls combined, this is amazing. There are 36 sweet 16 appearances. That's a state record, but only one state championship. I bet you, well, you don't remember that. You've been around for a while, but 1913, boys. the boys won it all. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm from Moline, so I've seen a lot of Galesburg teams play back with Bumpy Nixon and, and uh, Mike Owens and those teams. Those were outstanding teams that John Thiel had. And we used to go there and play, and, and it was a great rivalry between Moline. But uh, I don't remember the 1913 one, but I have to look that one up. There, how about this run here for Fenwick? Third place, state champs, go to the Supers last year and this year. Many people say they're the team to beat. Well, I think they, they probably are. Uh, they had a great game over at the Dundee Crown Tournament with Naperville Central, and if Naperville Central gets there, it's going to be an interesting situation. But, uh, you know, Dave Power's done an outstanding job. They have outstanding talent, I mean, coming into Fenwick. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a little controversy about the recruiting situation, but I have a lot of respect for Dave, and he, doesn't, he does not do it the wrong way. 133 wins in four years. Looking for 135 right here, and they are well on their way. You know, the last time we played them, we beat them, so. <laughs> Hydlock misfires, Boyd pushes the other way. Pause line, misses with the left hand. And Lawless finds Hydlock, who finds Rivera, who finds the basket. She's got four. The lead is swelled to 18. Yeah, Fenwick just keeps putting more and more pressure on it because they can score so easily. And the inside game there for Gales, it's just not there. Because there's a big number 34 lurking in the paint. And their and their guards go out and put a lot of pressure yep. on. So no it's question. hard to look inside and see those open looks because they can put the pressure on outside and take a lot of the pressure off inside. And yeah, that's overlooked. What Smiley and, and Hydloff and Rivera do out there is, and unless you know the game, you don't realize how tough it is to, to get into an offense because of this pressure. And, and I want to tell you, their best defensive player sitting over on the bench, Brittany Johnson, she had an ACL tear after right. the Dundee Crown Tournament. And, uh, she's a sophomore. She's outstanding, and she's a, she's a quality scholarship type athlete. I really... I have a lot of respect for her. Yeah, she's tremendous on defense. Yep, average nine points back. in 16 games before hurting herself. Right. Boy, a nice move. No. Offensive putback. Yeah, that was caused because Aaron had the foul. She didn't want to try to foul on that one. And we have a turnover. A rare 
turnover against the Friars. Yeah, that was just a fun, uh, fundamental uh, you know, mistake by Raven. You don't take the ball out underneath the basket any time you have to move. And especially after a score, you can run the baseline. Kelsberg trying to fight their way back into the game, trailing. A couple of minutes left. There's Gunther, and she's fouled. Tough call there for Elizabeth Marino, who appeared to be standing with her arms straight up in the air. And the Fenwick players are kind of wondering what, what that was. Well, Fenwick's got two other players that they can put inside. They got Margaret Knapp, who hasn't played in the game, who's very athletic. And then they've also got Bridget Liston, who's coming in here. Uh, Bridget, Bridget Liston is a very athletic player. As you saw there, Fenwick really taking advantage of when Gelsberg gives it to him. And Gunther misses another free throw. That's rare. Not today, unfortunately, for Galesburg. Three of seven from the line for Gunther. That's just that's just not typical of Amanda Gunther. Gunther will make this one. Had a nice follow through that time. 36-21. Pressure broken easily. And a layup will result by Rivera. Hey, here's Fenwick. Fenwick's guards. I don't know if you can pressure them. They have three very good ball handlers on the floor almost at all times. That's right. Good strong move by Stefan. She took it right at Lawless, but it's too hard with the effort. Lawless controls. I give her credit. She you know, power dribble went right at her. She didn't go up like she really meant it, though. There's Heidloff. Lob down low to Lawless. Tipped away. Now Boyd. 120 and counting to play. And there's a foul going to be called in the corner on Bridget Liston. That will be the fourth foul against the Friars. Each team with four team fouls here in the second half. That's going to be a little bit of a difference, but the game right now isn't that close. So uh, Fenwick can actually bring in a lot of their subs. Well, Bachman returns for Galesburg. And into the ball game for Fenwick is Maggie Cloak, as you were talking about just a little bit earlier there. Averages a little over four points a game. Dave will probably start resting some of these players if the lead stays like it is. Misfiring on the inside. Fenwick on the push out. Lawless traveled. One minute to go in the third quarter. Belleville on top for winner over Champlain Centennial in our first quarter final game earlier this afternoon. Uh, everybody likes to have a big player like Aaron Lawless, but the difference, Belleville off thought he lost that game, is their ball skills. The two Lish kids really control the game, and here the three Fenwick guards are controlling this game. Ball skills are important. Point guard is really important. Gunther misfires, but Boyd, nice job. Cloak brought it down, and any time a taller girl brings it down, the little girls know how to play. They get in there and scratch. It's not a good idea. I see go to throw it in. Up top the boy. Seagull drives, cut off by a lawless double team. A whistle and a foul off top. That'll be on Kristen Heidloff. That's her third foul also. Got to be a little bit careful because without Heidloff, uh, they lose that outside shooting. Liston returns and Lawless has the seat. 16 for Aaron Lawless. She might be sitting down for a while now unless the game gets closer. 38-21. Inside the Gunther and coming over the top. They spend it. That'll be on the cloak. There's your call. Dave Powell, huh? He looks pretty calm over there. There's your foul situation. Starting to add up. Gunther, no, but a foul is called. Almost got it to drop. Almost a chance for a three-point play. Now, what's happening here is when you get a few reserves in the game, the, the continuity kind of drops off a little bit, and the defensive rotations aren't quite as quick. And so they're not getting there, they're getting a few fouls. Amanda Gunther, 12 points, 4 of 8 from the line, and 4 of 8 from the field. Now she's got that 3 touch back. 
Evan Massey trying to find someone that can give him some offense other than this young lady. She has 13 of their 22 points. Kenny Parkin back into the ball game for Galesburg, and Lysago checks out. Galesburg's probably going to get right into some pressure defense, trying to press up again. Amanda made them both. Here comes the heat. It's a trapping defense like a diamond press. Gambler has it taken away. A steal, a jumper, in and out. And Traveler's going to be called on Galesburg. They'll get Allison Bachman for steps. That was a big possession just for momentum and, and a chance for Galesburg to get some, some easy layups and getting back into the game. It reminds me an awful lot of our first quarterfinal game. Rivera can't get it to go. Count it, and a foul is called. Good job by Bridget Liston of following the play. She is athletic. And she followed the play. She knows what to do. Rivera got ahead of the field, wasn't able to finish, and Liston finished for her. Good strong take to the basket. And she completes the three-point play. Her first three points of the afternoon. I think I'm finally going to press up a little bit, try and take the defensive pressure right back to Gilbert. Lead back to 18. A three off the mark. Gunther tries to save it and does. And Hosline not able to score at the end of the third quarter. We played three. Fenwick well on its way. The Friars lead Galesburg 41-23. We'll return to Redford Arena after these local messages. Off a winner in game one earlier today, 63 to 50. Stephanie Lish, 27 points, 11 rebounds. Sarah Thomas, 18 points and 15 rebounds. Now that moves us to tonight, game three at 6:30. Regina Dominican against Trinity, and game four, one we've all been waiting for: Naperville Central against Marion Catholic. Those are really contrasting games. You got Regina against Trinity. It's offense against defense. And uh, with this uh, game against with Marion, Marion wants to transition you and run on you, and Naperville wants to get back and play that zone and, of course, uh, control the game with Candace. So uh, just contrasting styles would be a very interesting game. And, and Marion will try to wear out a Naperville Central team that doesn't go very deep. They want to run, but if Naperville can get back and set up their zone, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough for, for Marion to, to transition. Marion is not as good in a half-court game as they are on the transition. They can really run. We're just underway here in the fourth quarter. Fenwick trying to hold on and earn a trip to the state semifinals. They lead by 18. And Lawless remains on the bench. Daryl, you're right. We may not see her for a while, if at all. Uh, Dave would probably like to rest her quite a bit. Galesburg playing man to man. There's Smiley against Sade Boyd. Fenwick content with her All-American on the sideline. Gunther pokes someone out of bounds to just use some clock and make Galesburg play some defense. That was a nice defensive play, though. She came up in the passing lane. Oh, we got her in back. And Lawless is going to come back. Uh, yeah, she was chopping at the bench. She had a frown on her face. And if you're David Powers, you want to keep 34 happy. That's for sure. Because he's brought a lot of pleasure to you, or she's brought a lot of pleasure to you over the last few years. Yeah. Smiley, reverse dribble. And Lawless traveled for a second time this half. She looks at the referee and says, wait a minute. I don't think so. I think she was just looking down at Coach Power's shoes. <laughs> if you missed that, we saw the gray shoes from Coach Powers earlier today with little black dots on them. Galesburg trying to get some offense and get it in a hurry. It's been hard to come by against this Fenwick defense today. Isigo drives, stripped away. And Lawless just yanks it away from a couple of silver streaks. Smiley to Rivera, and she wisely slows things down. This decision making is just so good with the Fenwick guards. Tideloff. Jumper. Good. For Raven Gangler, first bucket of the afternoon. 
wide open shot right at the L. That's what you want to get if you really want to put the ball down consistently. Biggest lead of the day, it's 20. Gunther tries to answer, cannot. And Gengler with a rebound. Rivera to Smiley, no. Rosberg lost it, and then a turnover. Hyde lost it. Parkin had the ball, had it taken out of her hands. Here we got Rivera hurts her ankle over here on the and sideline. And Rivera's a little dinged up. In front of the Fenwick bench is Nicole Rivera, 5'7", senior. And this is what you don't want to see, and this is what we were talking about with Lawless. You know, you, you're up by 20. You know, things are in good shape. Six minutes left to play. Do you leave your starters in or do you take them out? Can't take them all out. Rivera hobbles off and see if we can't see what happened. And another. Was it? This is the inside play. Yeah, is, I, I'm trying to right see after the play. It doesn't look like she came down on anybody's ankle. Maybe it's her no, Achilles. It's not yet. It's still going on. Oh, it was right after that. It was on the transition afterwards. We'll see if Lisa can find out what's wrong. Three try missed by Parkin and Lawless. Another rebound. Nice feed inside. Left-handed finish for Maggie Cloak. And Fenwick is putting the hammer down now. It's a 22-point game. Boy. Boyd will fire a three, and that climbs over the rim and in. That's what they need to get a few outside shots. So they really aren't looking for the shot as quickly as they should. Only their second three. 45-26, Lawless is fouled. And she shoot a couple of free throws. And Aaron's a very good free throw shooter also, as you would imagine. 71%. Well, here's her numbers across the board. 22 points, 10 rebounds, 54% from the field, 71% from the line. That's her first free throw attempt of the day. And she makes it. Isigo comes back in along with Gunther and Boyd and Stefan sit down. And there is a timeout on the floor. This I just say. With 4.58 left in the game, Fenwick in the lead, 47 to 26. And joining me right now is Joe, Mickey, and Tim. They are part of the Friar Fanatics, and they have not missed a game all season long. Well, except for two, but you guys get dressed up like this every single game. Yeah, um, the teachers at our school have a little thing when they talk to their classes. Uh, they mention all three of us and tell us, tell their students how much uh, Friar pride they need to have just like us three because we are the Fenwick Super fans! And they have been leading this group of Fenwick Friars the entire game and they're doing a fantastic job and the smiles on their faces because we're just moments away of seeing who will move on to the semis. Back to you, Scott. Uh, Daryl, don't laugh at that makeup. We'll probably be working for him one day. Probably will. <laughs> Well, it looks like it's Fenwick that will be moving on. A 21-point lead. You know, approach the, the midway mark of the final quarter. And yeah, the fans are so important. I mean, they, everybody in the school gets involved in these things, and uh, that's really what makes the tournament fun. I mean, the girls like to play, but they also like to get the crowds involved in the rest of the school, and that, that's what athletics is all about. Okay. Gunther will try from long distance, and that and dribbles in. Bounced in. She got the shooter's dribble. 47-29. Galesburg trying to hang in. Got there with 17 points. Wallace has 18. She gives it baseline to Cloak. Yeah, Fenwick's just content to run that little weave outside, and then they got Lawless cutting up to the high post, and they might get a nice back cut. Oh, well, with their guards, I mean, there's really nobody going to take the ball away from the guards. Smiley comes out top to Hydeloff. 
I'll get an update on Nicole Rivera coming up in just a couple of moments. Matter of fact, let's do that right now. Lisa, what is up with Nicole? It looks like she just has a muscle cramp in her right leg, and it's nothing that they said is very serious right now, but they are going to keep her out of the rest of the game. Scott? Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. There's a three that's off the mark. And when we saw her come down, she didn't twist her ankle on anyone, didn't come down on anyone's foot. And the way they were stretching her, her leg, you know, when you start bending the toes in, Daryl, it usually does mean uh, some sort Could of be a uh, muscle spasm or cramp. Of course, if I was there, I'd ask Nicole, what muscles? 49-29. <laughs> 20-point game, Fenwick. Will advance on to a date with Belleville Altoff in the state semifinals. Marino well, passed up a shot. Lawless will not. One of the few times today. In fact, just the second time she misses. Eight for ten from the field now for Aaron. Nice to go running in. Misses with the left. Offensive rebound. Put back up. Bachman can't handle it. Galesburg just can't get a break on those little easy bunnies. And that was a transition basket they would have liked to have had. Nice pass down low. Hydloff feeds Cloak and she scores. Back the other way. Three tries off the mark by Parkin. And they're going to get a foul called here on Fenwick. That's on Hydloff. That's yep. her fourth. Hydloff will get called for the foul, but fouls at this stage don't matter much. David Power has his. Bench at the scores table, and we will get five new Fenwick Friars into the ballgame. Rana sits down with 18 points and nine rebounds. She did not disappoint the people who came to see her today. Well, it's not just the points and rebounds. It's just her presence on the floor and it's the confidence she gives the other kids, plus the fact that Galesburg is concentrating on her and all the other kids are better because Aaron's on the floor. Marino sits down with four, Smiley with four, Heidloff with eight, six for Rivera. First free throw is good for Paws line. Paws line, another one of those smart kids. 4.0, perfect grade point average. And number 50, Aaron you see the emotion starting to set in for Galesburg. And Galesburg's had a great season now. Yeah, they've had a great run. I mean, come on. Seven of the last eight years. And the Elite Eight. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. And in 96, they finished third, 97 fourth, 98, lost in the first round, 99 second, 2004, 2001 fourth. So this is rare, though, them not getting out of the first round. Right, well, bracketing is everything. And one thing that's about Galesburg, if you take a look over in the stands and see their fans, you'll see if they have a yep. great a great support for their team, and that's what that's what makes it fun. The community's behind them, and, and they just do a great job of, of playing up to the expectations year after year. Gagler's going to get called for traveling. And there is Casey Perry limping back into the arena. Perry blew out her ankle in the first half. And she came down on her own yeah. player's ankle. And wants to come back in and support her teammates in the waning moments of what will be a very disappointing loss. 20-point game. Libby White here in 11 games this year for Galesburg is in there and a steal. Gangler. She'll have a run out, a dish, and a layup. Nice pass. Very unselfish by Raven. Tracy Pollock with the bucket. That might have been the uh, adjustment that Dave Power made at halftime with that back screen. Uh, turnover. And more fresh legs come in for Fenwick. Megan Musselman checks in, along with Margaret Knapp. Liston will leave, and there you see for Galesburg sitting down, uh, Andy Allison. As Evan Massey also tries to get in as many people as he can. This is it's really tough when you when you lose this this ball game because you're you're up for it and it's just so final and it's so quick. Yep, you're right. I mean, all the excitement, you're planning on staying the whole weekend, and it's, you know, it's time to go. And I've gone through that a few times. I know what the feelings are. Approaching a one-minute mark. And the rebound comes down to Galesburg. Don't forget tonight, Trinity, 
27 and 7 against 23 and 10. Regina Dominican, and then Marion Catholic and Naperville Central are two games tonight. And you'll have Capri Smith, the uh, potential All-American player in that game, playing against Christina Quay, who's going to Marquette. And of course, you got Candace Parker playing against Missy Minadero, Lauren Lacey, and, and the rest of the uh, Marion crew. Who's who, isn't it, this year? It sure is. Free throw is missed, and the rebound to Fenwick. That's that was Illinois Latoya basketball. Wright. Yeah, you're right. Troy Wright missed that free throw. A three off the mark by Katie Napleton. And we have a jump ball. Rashida Joyner and Michelle Dennison tie each other up. 22 point game. Libby White. Cross court pass. Dennison open from 15. That's no good. It's out of bounds. It'll be Fryer basketball. And they're still running that back screen. Got a nice shot out of it, but it just didn't go down for her. So Fenwick will win their 33rd game of the year. Of course, a couple of close losses in Naperville Central and Beaver Creek, Ohio. They won't lose here today. There's a foul with 24 seconds left. And Big Beaver Creek, Ohio has got the 6'5 Allison Bales, who's an All-American oh, yeah. player also. I mean, that's a that's a that's a big player. Lost that game by one, lost in overtime to Naperville Center. So we're looking at a team here, Daryl, that is a couple of breaks away maybe from being a perfect, perfect, what, 35 and 0 now. Right, they could be. And of course, Naperville is undefeated at this time. So uh, all these teams with these undefeated records, it scares me. <laughs> Almost makes you want to get out of the gig, huh? Yeah, they're trying to trying to tie us. We had a 35 and 0 record, the last uh, undefeated state champion. And uh, I hope one of them would get it. Latoya Wright, or yeah, Latoya Wright with a couple of free throws. And there's a turnover and a steal. Whitney Shepard for Galesburg to Libby White. Latoya open down low. Latoya, she scores. Latoya Wright with four points off the bench. It's an 18-point game as the clock expires. And that's it. Fenwick wins the game. 53-35, a very, very impressive performance, Darrell. Yeah, Fenwick just taking care of business the way that they're expected to. Now they'll be looking forward to uh, a, a game with a team that has two really good ball handling guards. And then we'll see what their guards will do with, uh, with the Belleville guards. And, and of course, the big thing uh, coming up with Fenwick is what kind of shoes is Coach Power going to wear next game? <laughs> 23 of 41 from the field for Fenwick. Galesburg was 10 for 41. And you're right, Fenwick, it was workmanlike. It wasn't flashy. It wasn't pretty. But you know what? It was as solid as solid can be. Well, that's what their players are all like. Lisa Prodding is standing by with a victorious head coach and his great shoes. Lisa. I have Fenwick head coach Dave Power. And coach, your team held on to the lead the entire game. You never gave up. And in that third quarter, you kind of ran with it. Yeah, our defense is a little bit better than I expected today. Uh, our offense usually is more in sync. We ran our patterns well, but usually we put up bigger numbers. Uh, but I was very, very pleased with the defensive effort and the depth. Our, our girls coming off the bench gave us big contributions when we got in foul trouble with uh, Marino and Lawless. And I was very pleased with uh, uh, the help we got from our bench today. It was a great team contribution and a great team win. Well, 2001 state champions looking for a 2003 title. How different does this year feel compared to 2001? Um, you know, there are some similarities, but the difference is, is that those girls, uh, there's just a few of them that actually played uh, the 2001. One's going to be right behind you, and of course, Aaron Laws were the starters off that team. And what I think is neat is they've been able to keep it at this level and uh, keep it going. It's been quite a run, and we're hoping to do it two more times. All right, congratulations, Post. Moves on to playing in the semis tomorrow against Belleville Altoff. And joining re re me right now is Kristen Hyloff, who is the country insurance player of the game. You had an incredible game. You finished with eight points. You had some big threes there in the first half. Talk about the pressure that uh, that the team put on you just getting here. Um, it, there was a lot of pressure to get down, um, but we, we played a great game today, and you know I'm really proud of how we played today. It's, it's nice to get the first one out of the way, and especially uh, I think winning by so much it gives us a lot of confidence going into Saturday. 
Well, I would assume you would have a lot of pressure just going into the season altogether just because of the fact that you have a player like Aaron Lawless on your team. Definitely. I mean, we have one of the top players in the country, so that kind of automatically makes us one of the best teams in the country. And, you know, if you're one of the best teams in the country, you better be one of the best teams in your state. And That's all right, because all the eyes are on you. Definitely. And uh, we've always been in the top of the rankings, you know, besides Naperville, but we're right up there with them. And, so there's a lot of pressure to, you know, kind of maintain your seed and where you are. Well, congratulations on being the country insurance player of the game. Moving on then to play Belleville Altoff tomorrow. Scott? All right, Lisa. Daryl, that's one confident young lady talking about being the, one of the best teams in the country, and I don't think you'll find anybody that argues with her. High Love is, is a big part of the Fenwick mystique. So our one semifinal is set for tomorrow. Belleville, Altoff, and Fenwick. Stay tuned. Coming up, more basketball tonight at 6.30. So long for now from Bloomington Normal.